Today we have a truly revolutionary piece of hardware to feature on NCIX Tech Tips. This is the ASUS ePad Transformer. It has Android 3.0, that is the one with the codename Honeycomb that everyone's been so excited about. But it's not all about the software for this one. This is also one of the very first tablets to reach the market with the NVIDIA Tegra 2 chip. The NVIDIA Tegra 2 chip allows cutting edge graphics and multimedia acceleration in a form factor that we've truly never seen before. Well, we have seen the form factor before, but not this kind of horsepower. So the obvious comparison would be the 800 pound gorilla in the market, the Apple iPad 2. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the overall construction of the unit. So it uses scratch resistant glass, which is, I'm led to believe, of similar to equal quality to what is used in the iPad 2. The back has kind of a weird looking finish on it. I'm going to get the cameraman to come and zoom in here. So it looks kind of like little flowers, and this serves a purpose. One, it makes it extremely scratch resistant because it's already a textured surface. Two, it makes it finger completely fingerprint proof in my experience with the device. And number three, it makes it grip a little bit better than say for example, um, anodized aluminum or plastic as a casing for the back. So while it is made of plastic, the texture has a very functional purpose. In terms of overall flex of the device, the build quality is extremely solid. I'm not in any way disappointed by that at all. Okay, it uses a widescreen, uh, 1280 by 800, that is pretty much HD. Remember 1280 by 720 is HD while not full HD. So that's 720p HD. And the overall weight of the device, if we use our little handy dandy scale, is, and I hope that's in pounds, 1.8 pounds. So we'll, let's compare that very quickly to an iPad 2. And that should give us a good general look at the, hold on, let's, uh, oh. It was at 0.2 before, so I guess we better. So the iPad 2 is a fair bit lighter than the Transformer, but there are definitely some advantages to this form factor that we'll get into some more. So let's do a quick thickness comparison as well as an overall size comparison here. I know this isn't going to be perfectly elegant, but we're gonna do our best with it. So I'm gonna take the iPad 2 and I'm going to put it underneath the ASUS Transformer EPAD transformer, there you go. So you can see, hopefully you can see, that the transformer is a little bit thicker than the iPad too. Why don't I go ahead and take these and put them down on the table in a second, but first I wanna show you from the front. The iPad 2 is also a little bit wider than the transformer, but because of its widescreen video format, which is much better for watching widescreen video content, the transformer is a significant amount longer. So now I'm gonna lay these down. So you can have a close look at the thickness. It is a fairly significant difference in thickness, although, as you can see, the weight difference between the two devices is not nearly as big as that thickness difference might indicate. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put an iPhone 4 in here, just so that you guys have that extra level of context for exactly how large this device is. And I'm also going to do a quick size comparison against the iPhone 4, so you can once again have a good look at the size. Now, screen. It's using an IPS panel. I already mentioned 1280 by 800 resolution. And I want you guys to have a quick look at the, you know what, let's open up the market or something like that so we don't just have a black background that you can't see. I want to show you guys the overall viewing angle performance. So the, ah, here we go. Now the cameraman's made it so I can actually see what I'm doing. So you can see that the viewing angle, even if you make it quite sharp, is very, very usable. So even up to about here, I'd say, is the limit of what is usable. So cameraman, if you wanna go ahead and zoom out, that can give them a pretty good look at just how much I have this tilted, where you can still see the content on the screen quite easily without any fuss. So we're just gonna go ahead and compare that really quickly to the iPad 2, which using an IPS panel itself is able to achieve a fairly similar viewing angle. So I would say as far as that goes, other than the formatting of the screen, which is a definite win because we were using widescreen here, the quality of the screens is quite similar. Now I wanna show you guys some video playback. This is uh, both of these devices recorded at the highest quality presets. I'm just gonna go ahead and play back pretty much the same video clip. I basically just stand in front of the tech tips wall and I talk a little bit. This should give you some idea what you're gonna be dealing with in terms of video recording as well as video playback on these two devices. I also wanna take this opportunity to, I'm just gonna close this down now, 
to show you guys how the camera app works on the Android 3.0 platform. So you open up your camera, you've got a few presets, but it's overall fairly straightforward. So here we go, we're just gonna go into camera mode. Oh, oh, we gotta go back, because we're in the library. There we go. So, you can switch your camera mode and video mode down here. You've got a couple of presets, like high quality, low quality, uh, time-lapse interval, color effects, all that good stuff, and then recording is done by simply pressing the button here, which is what we did to record the clips that we took before. Now let's take a look at a few unique features of the transformer. So first and foremost is what gives it its name. It is a transformer. That is to say it can transform from a tablet to bam, it's a netbook. So now all of a sudden you've got a 10.1 inch LED backlit IPS screen netbook. You have a multi-touch touchpad which you can use to navigate whatever it is that you want to do. Let's say for example, oh, and that doesn't mean that your touchscreen interface goes away. So now I can go into my uh, file explorer. I can go ahead and I can click on uh, download, which is where I saved my outline for this particular episode of Tech Tips. I can now use the mouse. I can open that up and boom, all of a sudden I have a multitude of different ways to interact with my PC. I can also use the full Android friendly keyboard here to type, which is something that unless you get a third party piece of hardware for something like the iPad, you can't really do comfortably. It is also a very well optimized keyboard. So we've got a proper enter key. That is a full width enter key, proper full width backspace key. I'm gonna tilt this up so the camera can see it a little bit better. Our shift key, is shortened, but it's shortened in the right direction for a change, so it's actually close to the home row. On the other side, you can see we also still have a full length chip key, uh, shift key, and they've replaced some of the buttons you would normally find on a keyboard with some Android friendly ones. There's no escape. Instead, there's a back button, which is great because Android has a back button, unlike some competing platforms on the market, which I think is awesome. We've also got, instead of function and then F1, F2, F3, F4, or F5, these are all native keys for those things that that we would normally do, launching browsers, uh, settings, um, opening up your camera app, whatever the case may be, you've got a whole lot of dedicated hotkeys up here, volume up, volume down, locking the device, all of that good stuff is natively built into it. Now, the keyboard mouse pad unit does increase the overall profile of the device. It increases the weight a disproportional amount, but there's a very good reason for that. By simply taking your transformer tablet, okay, and plugging it into the docking station, you not only get a full keyboard, touchpad, and uh, I believe you get a, yeah, you get a USB port. What else do you get? Ah, you get another SD card slot as well as another USB port. So you get all of those advantages, but you also get additional battery life. So you go from a nine and a half hour battery to interfacing with an additional battery pack that boosts the transformer up to 16 hours of battery life. So if you're using your tablet and you've got your keyboard pack in your backpack, for example, you run out of battery, boom, you click it in. Now you've got battery life for another few more hours while you're out on the go. Now I've made a whole lot of fuss about the input options that you get by adding the transformer keyboard mouse battery pack whatever this thing is called to the tablet itself. I mean you even got like a touchpad keyboard so you can move your mouse around and zoom in here zoom in there. I mean these are things you can do on the screen itself as well. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it. Just move the clip. It actually disconnects that easily that quickly and now all of a sudden it's a dedicated tablet again. So here's a cool feature. You just drag your finger over from the edge. Now all of a sudden I have access to a bunch of frequently used functionality. Forward back in my browser. I can add a new tab to my browser and this. This on-screen keyboard is awesome. Competing solutions on the market don't have a dedicated row for numbers, which some of us actually use fairly frequently. So let's just go ahead and we'll type a URL. Let's go to YouTube, especially when entering passwords. I don't know about you guys, but my passwords usually have numbers in them, so it often takes an awful long time to enter them on a competing platform, not naming any names. <coughs> um, so let's go ahead and uh, well, that was just to show the keyboard itself. I'm just gonna show you guys some of the other aspects of the keyboard. So here's your shift. Okay, shift, shift. You've got uh, all of your special characters are in here. So once again, you've got four rows of special characters so you can display a lot more per screen. We've even got dedicated smiley face keys. So I could search for smiley face K uh, R or something. Hmm. DK Raps, interesting, on YouTube, and I could actually type that in quite quickly. So 
I want to show you guys the multitasking really quickly as well. Now it's not, um, it doesn't show you every app that you've necessarily had open in the last little while, but what it does do is it gives you the last five that you were using. So from my perspective, that's actually very useful because most of the time I'm not doing more than five things on a device at any given time anyway, so I just press this button right here. Okay, oh, okay, I want to go back to my gallery, I want to play this video. It's a very quick way to pop between your frequently used applications, your browser, and whatever else you need to do. We've got tabbed browsing built in, and you can see it's quite fast to navigate between them. Just going to go ahead, tap that one more time. There we go, we can go to ncix.com. Just want to show you guys the browser speed on a website that you can easily uh, navigate to yourself. Okay, so the page is now loaded. There you go, just like that. We can navigate to our forum as well. And you guys can easily compare this against your own tablet devices or even your desktop. All right, so right now I'm playing a Burnt Face Man Flash video. I'm a big fan of Burnt Face Man and FatPie.com in general. But uh, what's most impressive about this is that it's playing a Flash video. That's pretty much all I need to say about that in comparison to the competing solutions on the market. So I want to show you guys some more features that are unique about the EPAD transformer. So let's start with expansion. This is a micro SD card slot, so I'm going to show you guys the entire physical characteristics of it. Micro SD means you have additional expansion on the cheap and on the fly. You can just add more storage to your EPAD transformer without much hassle at all. We've also got mini HDMI, which is pretty sweet because it means that you can output to your HDTV or computer monitor or whatever else you please. We've got a microphone headphone jack, which is pretty typical. We've also got one speaker on this side. We're going to flip around to the other side here. Now we have uh, latches for the keyboard as well as our power and data interface jack down here. Okay, up at the top we've got our other stereo speaker, so it is meant to be used in landscape mode primarily. We've also got our volume down, volume up, and power buttons. And finally, up at the top of the device we find nothing, nothing there. Now it also comes, in actually, in terms of storage, it comes not only with the micro SD expansion, but also with a free account to store, uh, what, what is it? They're saying one year of unlimited ASUS web storage uh, starting in mid-April, so that's a pretty cool feature as well. Now Google Maps is phenomenal on Android 3.0. It's a very, very enjoyable, intuitive experience. I'm just going to go ahead and switch back to uh, not the satellite overlay, which I don't prefer. So you can use two fingers to tilt the map as a whole. You can actually rotate it around. And uh, I'm going to cut away to some close-ups here of me just generally using it. So I'm not going to bother to continue using it in our main shot. But you can see what I'm doing here. So just panning around, zooming in, zooming out, tilting the map, changing to satellite view. Uh, you can see the GPS dot uh, for where we're actually located within the lower mainland. And uh, yeah, generally speaking, the Maps app is just utterly phenomenal. It's outstanding on the Android 3.0 platform. So I'm not going to get too far into the overall UI of Android 3.0. I think there's been an awful lot of talk about it so far. It is very multitasking friendly. It is very responsive as a whole. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll, uh, oh, I forget where I put my, oh, there it is. I forget where I put my browser. So I got my browser. I'm going to go back to home. Let's go back to uh, my gallery. There we go. I can quickly switch back to my web browser if I want to. I can go back. I can go home. I can wind down by playing a little bit of Angry Birds if I so desire. And so yeah, there's plenty of videos all over YouTube about the UI of Android 3.0. But what I just want to say more than anything else is that the UI is optimized for tablets. So while the older versions of Android are great for phones, this one is fantastic for tablet. You can see the overall responsiveness of the unit and I'm just going to, with that, call it a day. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips about the EPAD Transformer. Don't forget to subscribe for more reviews. And I have a question for you guys. If you were buying a tablet today, bearing in mind that there's not too many options on the market when we make this video, but today could mean when you're watching it, which one would you buy?